from the very beginning, I grew up on a, on a farm and uh, it, we called it the Noah's Ark farm. We had two of everything. But we did all of our own work. We, we did all of our own projects. We, we never hired someone else to do anything. And so I learned to do a lot, of, a lot of fun things and to be pretty independent and how to take things apart and put things back together. And, and it's probably some of the foundations of how I do a, a lot of the things I do today. Um, my first job was on a strawberry farm. I uh, actually picked strawberries, 25 cents a quart, and paid for um, you know a lot of my uh, a, a lot of my school clothes and because we you know we were on a farm we, we really didn't have uh, a lot of money. Um, I think this work ethic is um, is is one of the important things for me. Um, I wanted to be an engineer. Um, I I'd studied uh, and read about other engineers. Um, and I and I decided that's what I'd what I'd study. And my father and my mother they were both really you know really supportive. So I began my engineering curriculum, and 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 then really it, it just went from there. And I, I think the drive and the competitive nature that I that I grew up with is uh, is really at the root of it all. Some of the early challenges that I think of, even in engineering school, I mean, and I'm sure many of the people in the audience feel the same, that you find yourself a bit of a pioneer. You might be, you know, one or one of two or one of three women in most of the settings that you're in, whether it was in school or, or even at work. And I think, you know, this, this initially was a, was a challenge. I got a piece of advice early in my career from, from actually one of my mentors at General Motors. And they told me to, you know, really not, not think very much about it, not let it really impact the way I, um, the way I approached anything, and, and really to take feedback uh, as a gift. So I think many times women, when they receive a f piece of feedback, they think it's because they're a, w a woman. And I just, when I get a piece of feedback, I assume it's because I need it. And you know maybe sometimes it it wasn't uh, legitimate feedback, but I think it always helped me to improve and internalize and, and and make adjustments as I went through my career. I think you know my hope for the future of supply chain is that we continue to get you know more and more important uh, seats at the table, you know C level seat at the table, and I think this is really critical as you know supply chains really are the heartbeat of an organization. And you know we see these trends like digitization, um, driving value in the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, supply chain network. You know into your customers, into your suppliers. I mean this is really the, the the key. And I think those companies that figure out how to optimize that end-to-end -end using you know the advent of the the digitization now that we have in front of us. Those are the companies that are going to win. And of course the companies that see this as you know the heart of the company and really give it the, the, the full strategic seat at the table. Yeah, the biggest transformations in the, in the discipline are really going to come from digitization. And you know, we've all tried to and we've all attempted to reach into other parts of the supply chain, you know, into the suppliers, into the customers to drive more value. But what's happened is our ability now to, to have access to all of this digital information makes it really an opportunity, maybe for the first time uh, in all of our careers. So we now can optimize, truly optimize, the end-to-end -end supply chain. And it's not just for companies you know, like Walmart or, or maybe like Nike, but even for companies like Snyder, where we have you know, lots of complexity, lots of channels, lots of customer types. We can now also do the same that we see some of our, some of our uh, retailing supply chains uh, capable to do. I think the thing I'm most proud of is actually uh, some of the people that have have worked for me that I've mentored and developed and to see them taking really big really big jobs really important roles and doing fantastic at them I mean it's just I mean it it makes you feel great when you see someone that that you've helped from a very junior position take a you know a, a really impactful leadership role so I think the people that's 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 what I'm most proud of yeah, I think if you, for women and men, if you aspire to a top leadership role, the best thing you can do is when you're presented with an opportunity, you know, take it. When a door opens, you know, walk through it. And I see a lot of people really hesitating, maybe even over-calculating. 
And I, I think when opportunity presents itself, you really need to, to go ahead. And sometimes they have classifications like special assignment or a classification, maybe it's a job no one else has wanted to take. You can see that as a chance to drive transformation and step in and make a big difference. And I think making your mark in that way is really one of the ways to, to succeed and to develop uh, the kind of reputation that you might want to have.